everyone. I hope you all are well. This is Terry, and I'm offering a close to an hour, I hope, uh, restorative yoga class, which is pretty timely, something that we need to learn how to reduce our stress levels and, and reteach ourselves how to relax. So you can do this with a lot of things that you have at home. Of course, if you have these handy dandy yoga bolsters, then use them. If you have a blocks, use a couple of blocks. So take some time here. You can stop the video after I give the list and to gather some things. So if you have blocks, use them. If you have bolsters, use them. And then if you don't have yoga bolsters, which most of you probably don't, just grab a couple of pillows off your bed, a couple like this, and then grab maybe some other pillows that are a little firmer off of your couch or your bed and have them handy. And then maybe grab a couple of blankets. This is a yoga blanket, but you can use a quilt. You can use what you have at home. The other thing that's helpful is an eye pillow, or you could just use a hand towel to put over your eyes. Another thing that you don't have to have, which is helpful, is a strap. And go ahead and uh, you can put a loop in it that's about hips width distance. You won't need a strap for this though, any of these poses if you don't have one. The other thing I found that works well instead of a strap is one of these little resistance bands that you might use in some of your other exercises. So let's get started in our first pose, which is going to be legs up the wall. It really is a great pose for calming the nervous system. So you may want to use props or you may not want to use any props at all. I'm gonna show you legs up the wall with all of the props. You can place a pillow or a yoga bolster parallel to the wall. I'm using my front door because I don't have a lot of wall space in my house. You might want to have a strap or one of these bands handy and then a blanket or you may not want to have any at all. Let me show you legs at the wall. Let's just get started with all of the props if you so desire to use it. So sit up against the wall, back against the wall and then bring your forearm to where you eventually are going to be and then bring all your weight to the forearm, sweep your legs up as gingerly and gracefully as you can, supporting your lower back, maybe your tailbone hangs off just a little. It's nice to have a little space between your hips and the door, but if you want to, you can. Your hips can be a little closer if your hamstrings aren't very open and you can always move your hips back. Now you can be right here or you can bend your knees and place a strap around your shins to keep your legs. It just You don't have to feel like you're holding them together. This just gives you some support. The other thing you can do with a blanket is to unfold it a little Bend your knees towards your chest, place the blanket over your feet, and then bring your heels up against the wall. It just gives you a little bit of weight, a little bit of softness to your heels against the wall, and then cactus your arms if you'd like, or lengthen it by your side, or interlace your fingers on your belly. The other thing that's helpful is an eye pillow. So grab your eye pillow, place it over your eyes, Cactus your arms and just settle in, soften into the shape of this pose. This pose is so good for calming your nervous system, for releasing fatigue from your legs. It's a great pose to do after any really vigorous exercise that you do. So just let's Find some stillness, become aware of your breath.
Feel your hips heavy. Relax your jaw. Feel your shoulders spacious on the ground. We'll talk just a little about why we do restorative yoga. Restorative yoga is the use of props and support to bring relaxation and ease to the body. So it's basically about restoring the innate ability that we used to have to actually relax. And I know you're saying, well, I sleep every night, so I'm relaxing. Well, when you sleep, your muscles will still tense. So the, the joy of restorative yoga is that you're using your conscious mind to really target and feel areas of tension and then consciously let those areas soften, let them relax. So it involves awareness. It involves awareness of your breath. Your breath is a wonderful tool for calming the nervous system. And with restorative yoga, two things. You want to feel safe and you want to feel comfortable. So you'll feel some opening. It's not about stretching. You will probably feel some opening, but it's more about relaxing, learning how to relax, retraining yourself how to be comfortable with stillness, with silence. So you will need an intention during your class. So consider your intention. Your intention can also just be your breath, coming back to your breath. Because we will be still. And for some people, when you're still, they seem to be able to have stillness or more stillness in their thoughts. But for most of us, when we become still, our mind does not want to be still. So that's why it's good to have a focus, a thanksgiving, a prayer, something you can focus on, monotask on. So just be here, be heavy. Feel your breath. On every inhale, feel your belly rise. On every exhale, feel your body heavy. And with legs up the wall, it's okay if you feel your heartbeat in your feet, but if you happen to feel any numbness, tingling, or unpleasant sensations in your feet. You can always just bring your feet, draw your knees towards your chest. Maybe bring the outside edges of your feet toward the wall, let your knees fall open, or you can just draw your knees towards your chest.
to scan your body. Notice if you've re-clenched maybe your inner thighs, your glutes. Just feel your hips heavy. Shoulders spacious. Throat, neck, jaw soft. Relax the space between your eyebrows, your forehead and the crown of your head. Let go, soften. couple of breaths here and just see if you can let go of any last remaining bits of tension. And then when you're ready, draw your knees towards your chest. Remove a strap or a band if you have that around your legs. Press your feet against the door or a door for me, maybe wall for you, and press your hips away from the wall. Just enough so that then you can draw your knees towards your chest, cross your right ankle over your left ankle, and if you're on a bolster, keep your sac sacrum on the bolster. It just feels sweet on your lower back. Just stay here for a breath or two. Cross the other ankle on top. And when you're ready, gently draw both knees towards your chest and then slowly roll onto your right side. Maybe resting your right ear on your right bicep. Pausing here, and then very slowly, with intention, press into your forearm, your left hand, and slowly find a seated position, just letting your head come up last. So our next pose is going to be supported bridge pose, and all you may want to use is one block or maybe a pillow or two. If you have a nice firm pillow like this, you can use one of those instead. So I'll show you um, supported bridge with a lot of props. So if you have blocks, you can use two blocks and the strap again. So have those handy. You're going to lay on your back, knees bent, feet flat, on the ground. If you want to use a strap and a block, this just helps keep your legs more relaxed because you don't have to feel like you have to support them, keep them together. So you can bring a strap around your thighs 
kind of loosening it a little. And then you can place a block between your thighs. So it's the narrow setting that's between your thighs and between the two straps. Lower your feet to the ground. Press into your feet just enough then to place a block or a bolster or a pillow underneath your sacrum. So you can use the medium setting or the lowest setting. I'll just use the lowest setting here. It's a little more stable. Place it on your sacrum, which is right above your tailbone and just below your lower spine. So let your hips sink into the support of the block. Grab your eye pillow if you have one, place it over your eyes. Lengthen your arms long or you can cactus your arms again or interlace your fingers on your belly. And just let your legs relax into the support of the block and the strap. If you don't have a block or a strap, that's fine too. You can bring your feet a little wider, maybe mats width distance and let your knees fall together or you can just keep them pointing straight up. Whatever's more comfortable uh, with your body. Every body is different. And just find stillness, find your breath. Relax your hips. I always like to clench thinking I'm helping. Just really, really relax. This is a fabulous pose for really tapping in to the parasympathetic side of our nervous system, the rest and digest side. Right now during these times, our sympathetic nervous system is probably under almost constant stimulation. So our goal here is to help you relax by tapping into that parasympathetic nervous system. So feel every part of your body that's touching the earth, touching a block. Relax your shoulders, hips, relax your jaw, pelvic floor, inner thighs. Notice how it's easier to breathe. The breath comes a little easier in this pose.
notice any areas of remaining tension? Have you reclenched your inner thighs, your glutes? Sink into the support of the earth and your bolster or block. Feel heavy, let go, soften. Take a couple of more breaths here, just really releasing, letting go. And then press into your feet. Lift your hips just enough to remove the block bolster pillow from underneath your hips and let your lower back come to the earth. Maybe widen your feet a little, let your knees fall together. Feel the length that you've created in your lower back. And then very slowly draw your knees towards your chest and then roll to your right side using your right forearm as a pillow giving your knees finding a fetal position and then slowly push yourself up to a seated position just letting your head come up last And our next pose is going to be an elevated twist or just a twist on the ground. If you have a pretty firm pillow, you can use that. I'm going to show you on a yoga bolster. So you're going to lay yourself back down. Knees bent, feet flat on the ground. You're going to bring that bolster to the right side of your body, press into your hips, lift your hips, and then pull that bolster all the way across so that the, there's a large amount of bolster on your left side. Your right cheek might be hanging off the end of the bolster. If you have a bolster, the base of your bolster will be at the base of your buttocks. The top of the bolster will be near the base of your rib cage. Now, if you're on the floor, you can just do this on the floor. It doesn't have to be elevated. So inhale as you lift your knees if you're on the bolster or on the floor. And then exhale as you let your knees fall to the bolster on the left or to the floor. Just a nice little supine twist. You can bring your right palm now to your left palm, lengthen the right hand beyond the left hand, and then sweep that right arm up and down. You can always take a pillow or a, a bolster or blanket and support your right arm. If your feet are floating, you can always place a block underneath that or if you have a pillow and it, and it feels better you can also place it feels good sometimes to place a pillow or a bolster between your thighs your gaze can be up 
and you can use an eye pillow or you can gaze over your right hand. So doing this on the floor is just as good as this. The advantage to being elevated is you're going to feel a gradual traction in your lower back, a gradual release. It feels pretty sweet. The other thing you could do is place a little weight on top of that thigh. And just notice what you're feeling and where you're feeling it. If you're elevated, you're getting all the benefits of a mini inversion, a twist, a little bit of a heart opener. Maybe you're feeling it in that upper thigh a little, maybe in your right shoulder. So be comfortable if you need to readjust any time during the pose. If things are painful, please feel free to move. You want to feel safe and you want to feel comfortable. You want to relax. Stand your body again, let your hips be heavy, inner thighs, glutes relaxed, softening that upper hip. Just a couple of breaths here, really sinking in to the support of either the floor or your bolster. And then if you have anything on top of your thigh, remove that and slowly roll on to your back again. Knees bent, feet flat. So you're now you're still on the right side of your bolster and now press into your feet. We'll do the other side and slide that bolster or push it to your right side. Your left buttock might be hanging off a little. Inhale as you lift your legs into reverse tabletop. Exhale. Let your thighs fall to the bolster, resting your feet on a block, a pillow if you need to. Lengthen your right arm out, bring your left palm on top of your right palm and then lengthen it past your right hand. Inhale, sweep your left arm up and then float it to the ground. Maybe gazing over that left shoulder, maybe bringing a blanket to support your left arm. You can use your eye pillow if you gaze up. You can place anything between your thighs again or on top of your thighs. No 
noticing where you feel your breath in this pose. Consciously relaxing hips, inner thighs, glutes. Just let your hips totally sink into the support of the bolster. Feel your shoulders heavy and spacious. Fingers relaxed, face relaxed. Scan your body, release any last bits of tension. Feel your whole body heavy. And when you're ready, remove any props that you need to, and then slowly roll onto your back. Just take it a moment here, and then press into your feet. Lift your hips, remove the bolster, and lower your hips back to the ground. Then gently draw your knees into your chest and slowly roll onto your right side, resting your head on your right forearm. Taking a breath or two here, and then slowly pushing yourself up to a seated position, slowly taking your time, finding a seated position. So our next pose is my favorite restorative pose. It's reclined bound angle. So we're going to use a lot of props. So if you have blocks, I'm gonna show you how to, and a bolster, I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to build a little back rest with a bolster and blocks. So use a couple blocks, place one block in the lowest setting, another block, on the highest setting, maybe six to seven inches away from that top lower block. And then place the bolster like so. I'm just going to move it back. So probably most of you all do not have this set up. So what you can do is grab a couple of pillows. You're going to have to be creative here. Maybe place a prop one up a little higher. And then take a pillow, a normal pillow, and place it like this so you have a nice little backrest. And sometimes you might need a little more support because you want to keep your chin tucked a little. Then what you can do, I know I have a ton of stuff out here, don't I? Just take another pillow 
or if you have a bolster, you can use that. Sit down with your tailbone at the base of your pillow. And then what you can do is just prop that pillow up tall like this, bring the soles of your feet together in front of the pillow, and just let your knees fall open like this. A king size pillow would probably actually work best. Or you can keep the pillow flat, scrunch it up a little, soles of the feet together, let your knees fall open. I forgot to tell you, you can also use a dish towel if you want to bring the towel over the tops of your arches and then bring the ends underneath your heels just to keep your feet stable, but you don't have to. You can uh, stay right like that. You can also put blocks under your knees if you'd rather, or two different pillows. And then just lean back, find a comfortable position. Make sure you have a little tuck in your chin. Now you can interlace your fingers at the base of your belly, or you can use bolsters and blankets to support your arms if you need it. And grab your eye pillow and place it over your eyes. Now this pose, we're holding the longest amount of time. So you want to be comfortable here. So sink into the support of your backrest. Make sure you do have support underneath your thighs or knees to really help that nervous system let go. When you have support, your brain tells your body that it's okay to relax. So you're just really helping that relaxation response. So close your eyes, breathe, feel your bones and your muscles being cradled by your props, which in turn causes your whole nervous system to feel crated, cradled. Feel a little heart opening, an inner thigh opening. So just relax, feel heavy. Soften your whole body into the shape of this pose and enjoy.
Start to bring awareness to your body, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. And then when you're ready, bring your hands down by your side and then slowly push yourself up to a seated position, keeping your legs right where they are. Grab a bolster or take that pillow that you had using as a backrest, bring it in front of you, maybe put another pillow on top and just take a forward fold or you don't if it's your it's more comfortable for you not to use any of this inhale lengthen you can and exhale as you fold just bring your forehead to your hands you can bring your head to one side should feel pretty sweet in your lower back little opener in your hips Relaxing your shoulders, feeling your legs heavy. If you have your head turned in one direction, then gently lift your head and bring the opposite ear to the pillow or bolster. And when you're ready, slowly push yourself up to a seated position, removing everything off your mat. It's now time for our final Shavasana. So you can keep that bolster or pillow right underneath your knees. I'm going to show you, if you have a blanket or a quilt, how you can make a little head nest real fast. It's kind of nice. So generally speaking, you have the blanket kind of about this size, look like that. And then fold it so that you have some rough edges. Oh, a couple of inches from the very bottom. Then what you can do is fold those rough edges up and then fold everything under. So then it kind of looks like this. If this is too confusing, just find a comfortable way to support your head or don't support your head. So then you can take this blanket, lay down, knees on top of the pillow, the bolster, adjust your headrest so that that little rolled up edge is right underneath the base of your neck. Then you can roll under that top layer again and then maybe roll under the lower layer. So just settle in, relax your arms where they're comfortable along your sides. You can interlace your fingers on your belly. Just let your feet fall open. Feel your breath moving in and out of your body, in and out of your lungs, in and out of your nose. So I'm going to talk you through a little progressive relaxation. Use your eye pillow too here. I didn't mention that. So grab your eye pillow, use that. Offer more and more weight of your body into the support of the earth, feeling heavier and heavier, softer and softer. Feel your breath rise and fall. Tune into the sound of your breath. 
I'm going to mention body parts. And as I mention each body part, I want you to relax and visualize warm liquid releasing in that body part. So relax the tip of your right thumb. Relax the tip of your index finger and the tip of your right middle finger. Relax the tip of your ring finger. Relax the tip of your right pinky finger. Relax the palm of your right hand. Relax your right wrist. Relax your right elbow, feeling that warm fluid, liquid releasing in your right elbow. Relax your right shoulder, feeling warm fluid releasing in your right shoulder. Relax the whole right side of your chest. Relax the center of your chest. Now relax the whole left side of your chest. Soften your left shoulder, feeling the warm fluid releasing in your left shoulder. Relax your left elbow. Relax the palm of your left hand. Relax the tip of your left thumb the tip of your left index finger, the tip of your left middle finger. Relax the tip of your left ring finger. And finally, soften the tip of your left pinky finger. Relax your whole left arm and left side of your body. Relax your whole right arm and right side of your body. Soften your pelvic floor, your hips and glutes. Soften everything behind your navel. Relax the center of your chest. Relax your throat and your neck the sides of your neck. Soften the space between your eyebrows. Relax the crown of your head. Feel your head heavy, your arms heavy, your torso heavy, your legs heavy. Feel your whole body heavy. Now feel your body hot. Feel it lying on a hot summer desert floor under the hot summer sun. Your whole body is so hot. Now feel your body cold, freezing, encased in ice in the middle of a snowstorm. Your whole body is so cold. Now feel your body heavy again. Every cell of your body has significant weight. Your bones, your muscles are so, so heavy. Your whole body is sinking, melting into the earth. Now feel your body light and weightless. Feel space between the backside of your body and your mat as your body slowly levitates from the ground towards the ceiling. Your whole body is light and weightless. Now slowly bring your body back to earth and as it grounds down, feel it sink three inches into the support of the earth. 
Feel the weight of your head, back, shoulders, arms, and hands. Hips, knees, calves, and heels. Feel the contact of every part of your body to either a prop or the earth. Now return to your breath, feeling it move in and out of your body, in and out of your lungs, in and out of your nostrils. Stay here for as long as you would like. Thank you for joining me in this online video. I hope that you can take the peace, the stillness that this practice offers with you into your life, that it's helped re re take away some anxiety, stress, so I hope that you all have a wonderful week, wonderful distancing, social distancing. Peace be with all of you. I pray that you are well and healthy. God bless and protect us all. Namaste.